everyone, and uh, thanks to join us for the AGL Profitability Hub conference. Today, I have the pleasure to be with Pierre Besseril, the CEO of Transparent. Transparent is a data provider that focuses on the short-term rental industry. And together with Pierre, we will discuss the current landscape of the short-term rental market based on the data Transparent is able to gather uh, uh, from different sources. So first of all, Pierre, thank you very much for taking, the, taking your time and to be with us today and our audience. I wanted to, to start with uh, how are you? How are you coping with the lockdown? And from where are you, are you speaking to our audience today? So hi, Nicola. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Um, so I'm, I can't complain, you know, luckily, uh, the team, family, and friends, everyone's safe. So on that front, you know, I really can't complain. And, um, and you know, I'm, I'm here, locked down in Madrid, entering into our, our fifth week of, of lockdown. Uh, but like I said, luckily, everything is fine on the health side, which, which is the important. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more. That's the, that's the most important part. And as long as everyone that surrounds you is safe, that's, uh, that's what matters in those days. I myself am speaking from Barcelona, where I'm also on lockdown for five weeks. So it's starting to be, uh, to be a little long. And uh, hopefully we can find other ways to gather and share good content with, uh, with everyone and maybe give them a little hope or better overview of what's happening into, uh, into the world and into their specific markets. And for that, I think Transparent has done a very uh, very interesting work in the last weeks because you've been sharing a lot of data, you've been participating to a lot of webinars and really trying to put things in perspective with what the data can tell us to regarding what's happening and what are the effects of that COVID-19 pandemic. So let's, uh, let's get started on, um, on, our, on our conversation. So I guess that from what you're seeing, usually uh, the global trends have completely ch changed due to, this, uh, due to this pandemic. So in your opinion, and uh, according to, to your data, what is the real impact of COVID-19 on demand, on cancellations, on ADR? Can you give us a brief overview of what the data is telling you? Yes, yeah, so if that's okay, I'm going to share my screen. Um, and for that, I'm, I'm going to use the, the special page we've, we've put together. So we've just uh, updated, actually. We keep updating every week. So I, I don't know. Can you see my screen? Yeah. I can oh, see so your screen. This is great. So if you go on ctransparent.com, you can uh, access this website that we put together with special content. So you can see here all the categories. And in there, um, just yesterday, actually, we inserted um, a special report that is available by market and that is filterable. So if you wanted to check Barcelona, for instance, you could go out and, and check out what's, what's happening in Barcelona with you know, high-level metrics that we are going to try to refresh as much as we can. So you'll see demand this year versus last year, you know, information, by, uh, information of demand versus compared for the two years, um, the evolution of the cancellations, the evolution of the prices, um, and then you know some some information on top property managers and some other some other metrics on supply. So just so we know, let know the audience know they can go on our website and, and filter. There's not every markets in there, and if they have additional questions or if they want to understand about methodology, they can always reach out reach out to us. So you know with that introduction, I want to show you some some high level data here. We're not going to drill down into any market specific, but. Um, show you where we are today we just produced this uh, this uh, this page actually let me see if it's if it's in there um it should be updated there as well um here you go so basically this is um the the impact that it has had on reservation week by week so this chart right there shows the difference in reservation uh from this year to the last one uh so negative difference means there is less reservation and you can see how since you know starting with five six of the year uh, we've started to go below, even though we had a good start of the year, it just became uh, really, really harsh. And right now, you know, in, in countries like Italy, France, etc., we're seeing minus 99, minus 98 percent number of the reservation on a, on a year on year basis. Right. So this is to show you that, you know, most countries are affected. They've been affected at different pace. So you see Italy right there, um, obviously, was the first to sort to get to critical levels, but then it was followed by by the rest of the the rest of the mar of the market. We had some surges in in the U.S. You know, there's been some uh, some uh, some demands linked to coronavirus, if you want, that we've seen them in the market, but it's not enough uh, at 
nationwide level to maintain uh, demand, right? Uh, and this chart here as well shows the same thing, but instead of a breakdown by country, we broke down by, uh, by top OTAs. So what we want to show here is, you know, the OTAs have started the year, uh, you know, relatively normally, and then they just been hit really really hard so you can see airbnb now is at 95 percent of less reservation booking.com 93 and expedia is at, at minus 95 percent so you know across the board it's basically uh, a huge impact and the state of where we are is basically the industry is pretty much on pause right now uh, with most uh, most of the activity um being stopped okay yeah, I guess that's uh, that's just confirming what, what everyone is seeing into their into their individual markets. But it always helps to to put data behind that and to get some granularity in terms of where the demand is still happening and uh, and all of that. So thanks a lot for for sharing that uh, that page. We will make sure we add that link to uh, the Pilot Talk Media website so people watching your video can access that dashboard and maybe get some insights on uh, on the situation into into their markets or the global the global situation. So, of course, there's a very steep decline in demand, and uh, and that I, I guess everyone has realized that by now. But it's always helpful to, to get data and to maybe catch on some micro trends that you can find individually into into your markets. And when you're when you're looking at that, so you're you're showing by OTAs, by countries. But do you see um, if we divide the property managers between leisure and urban markets? Do you see any trends in terms of uh, cancellation or in terms of booking that might still be happening is there is there a differentiation between those two type of locations or is it the same for everyone in the end um, well, we can we can look into it so we, we put some data as well on cancellations I mean overall it's the same picture right so you've got uh, countries that have just banned and countries and entire areas that have just banned short-term rental for the period so for instance here in Spain um, it's been it's been banned by the state. You can't do short-term rental except if it's for uh, emergency reasons. Um, in 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 Florida as well, there's been put you know a ban on, on short-term rental for the time being. So it, it's hard to say because it really depends of the market. But in general, the demand is is extremely low. So we've we've put this chart together, I think here where you see uh, urban versus leisure, and this is the the pace at which the cancellation are being made. So you know in the normal times, uh, it's 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 quite low and normally well you've seen that you know starting beginning of March it has grown uh, quite fast so it's grew very very fast in the urban market first but then it was joined by leisure that just has a slight delay and and is in, in the same areas you know we're, we're we're arriving high season in a lot of markets there has also been um, the Easter holiday so that also has helped driven a little bit uh, you know the, the cancellation on the leisure market side but in general, you know, it's the same picture. Most of the most of the markets globally are, are just on hold. Yeah, we see that the the leisure started with cancellation a little bit later, but it also can be explained with their high season, as you say, that is not yet started. When in urban, you usually have uh, a demand that is steady all year with some variations into into seasonality. So yes, okay, that's a that's a bit of a grim picture for for everyone into into the industry. So yes, and uh, yes, that that dashboard is showing that uh, is showing that clearly. And now, if we if we look at the the bookings that are still happening, you said that there was in the U.S., for example, some coronavirus or isolation, self-isolation bookings that were still happening. So what are the characteristics of those bookings? Is the length of stay longer? How are the daily rates compared to last year in the, at the same time and destinations? Yeah. So, for, I mean, on the rate side of things, this crisis is not about rates. You can drop your rates. It's not going to help get any reservation. It's uh, basically a crisis of demand. There is no demand. There is no mobility, and people can't book for that. So, we haven't seen a huge shift in in uh, in rates. Uh, there's a slight decline, but it's not very you know it's not very uh, significant. If you look at the the, the market report I was showing you earlier, um, these are the rates for I think we've put in there the rates for the months of of June. Um, and how they've evolved, you know, in, in this is a, an aggregate of 200 markets. So, you know, since January, the, the rates have, have slightly dropped, but it's not a huge, you know, it's not very significant given uh, the shrink in demand, right? 
Um, so I would say rates haven't been really impacted. Um, on the other side, on length of stay, we do have some, some metrics here that shows that there's been an increase in length of stay. So, you know, starting again, week 10, 11, we've seen the average uh, reservation time uh, close to double. Um, and that is on the very, very few reservations that are being made effectively, uh, you know, the, the length of stay has been, has been increased and we could expect it to continue as um, most likely, you know, the sort of weekend trips and short trips and, um, and the, the corporate reservations for corporate travel um, may as well decrease and this may impact on the, on the midterm at least the length of stay. Okay, so yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting to see that the length of stay is higher and also the, the ADR because as, as you said, there's no demand. So there's no need or <laughs> there's no need to try to catch a demand that is completely absent. And we see that property managers have understood that and have not put their rates at floor level because then it's really hard to get back on that when demand is picking up. So it's, uh, it's, it's, an, interesting, uh, it's, it's an interesting insight on, on that part of the um, of the market and also another another thing and um, that, that we are seeing and Airbnb has announced that that they will move toward mid stay as well offer that type of product on their on their website so and I guess a lot of owners are also trying to switch to midterm rentals to, to mitigate the effects of, uh, of the COVID-19 is that uh, is that supply so the units that were rented on a short-term basis is that supply still available on the short-term rental platform Platforms, or do you see that supply moving towards more real estate focused platform that are already in existence and maybe well known into most markets? Yeah, the, the, on the supply side, we haven't seen uh, a big shift. Uh, let me just go in there. For instance, if we look at, you know, um, big market like Barcelona, for instance, just as an example, um, right, you can see... Um, that the supply, which is going to be the last chart right here, hasn't really evolved much. It's been a little bump here, but it's been corrected. So basically, we are at the same level as we were before. Um, these are number of active properties, and by active, we define listings that are searchable on the platform independently of their calendars. Right? We're not looking at calendar uh, availability or anything like this here. So what that means is people haven't uh, removed their properties from the OTAs. So there is a huge shrink in demand on one side, but on the other side, there's still the same amount of supply in the, on, the, on the platforms. What we've seen, however, is that some um, operators have started to list their properties uh, as an emergency measure, if you want, and especially those doing rent to rent who you know, uh, are specifically, I mean, especially in need of, of, uh, of revenue to pay out the leases. Um, have in some some cases tried to go out and chase the long term rental, uh, so you know we track a few rental um, a few rental websites long term, and we've seen a slight increase in a in number of listings, despite the market condition where you know clearly nobody can really visit a flat or or go on the on the, on the, on the chase. But we have seen a, a little uh, shift there, but most of the supply is still out there on the on the platform. Okay, so it's not a complete lose, uh, loss of faith from property managers. They are just trying to keep their business afloat with long term, but that supply that was available for vacation rental will come back to the vacation rent as vacation rental supply when demands will pick up. Yes, okay, so and again, uh, there's, there, there's, no, there's no secret solution here. I mean, the long term is affected equally, you know, in the, and long term landlord are also affected, you know, pretty much globally, there's, uh, there's, there's discount on leases that are being made in the US. There are rent strike where uh, entire buildings of uh, multifamily properties are, you know, sort of uh, getting together to do a rent strike and not pay the rent. So the landlord has to do some, uh, some discount. So it's really not something that is only affecting us. Uh, you know, commercial real estate has been uh, hit really, really, really hard. So anyone owning, you know, a restaurant or uh, a retail store as they also have had uh, problems getting paid by their tenant. So clearly vacation rental is on the front line because mobility first affected travel. Um, but in general, this is a global crisis for real estate and you know, office spaces, commercial realtors, everyone has to make effort in this period because most tenants are not in a position to be able to pay what they used to pay. Yeah, it's true that 
unfortunately, that crisis goes way beyond the travel space, and every a lot of verticals are uh, or businesses are impacted. And yes, of course, we we can imagine that also multifamily owners, for example, need to find solution to to keep their their own business afloat, even if it's not related per se to uh, to travel. So yes, of course, that uh, that crisis is. Is quite uh, is quite impactful for for everyone in uh, in the world, and um, so w- one thing that we've seen at uh, at AGL Consulting when we speak with our different customers and we are addressing a very broad spectrum of property managers, for example, and when we speak with some of our partners who are luxury operators, they tell us that they are getting bookings that they've never seen before. For example, luxury properties in the Swiss Alps that are rented for one month or this type, this type of booking that usually are absent during their, their shoulder season or the end of their high season. Is it a trend that you can see into data or is it something that, that's too marginal for, for people to get into it? Yeah, no, we haven't seen, we haven't seen much of it. Uh, to be honest, there's been some markets, you know, in the US, you know, around the big cities that have a little surge in demand uh, right at the beginning, if you want, of the of the when the when the crisis started to really hit hard in the U.S., uh, there has been some market, for instance, in France, where um, you know the week before the quarantine uh, had a little surge in demand versus last year. Uh, but in general, you know, it's 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 really about you know um, in the, in this context, it's, it's, a, it's just about shrink shrinking demand and. Even though there's a few exceptions, most most markets are being being impacted. You know that said, we could imagine that after the quarantine, when things reopen lightly, um, people we have realized that you know they they stay stuck at home for for a long time, and we can imagine that short term rental will be one one solution they'll be looking for to escape and 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 get some some fresh air. So that's one of our hope is that you know the the local demand will grow, uh, and and potentially these units that are a little bit more rural a bit more isolated would be the first one to uh, to benefit from this uh, this new demand right but right now overall it's it's you know like i said demand is down 95 99% across board Okay. Yeah. So that's a, that's a very marginal phenomenon that some people might be enjoying, but there's no there's no global trend. And yes, of course, we can also assume that when demand will pick up, people are maybe less likely to go into urban centers or in properties where they are packed with other guests coming from everywhere in the world. So yes, of course, we are quite optimistic uh, for the vacation rental as one of the travel verticals in terms of uh, in terms of recovery. So we spoke about, uh, you just alluded to that in terms of uncertainty of where the lockdown is going gonna, is gonna to stop and that, mm-hmm. uh, that need for people to, to travel and get outside of their, of their apartments if they've been locked down into, into a city. So are you, in terms, in terms of the cancellation, are you seeing the cancellation happening already now, for example, for booking in August? Or are people waiting the last minute to maybe be able to enjoy their holiday? And do you see cancellations happening in a very short period of time before the booking, before the check-in date? Sorry. Um, well, again, reservations we're, we're we're seeing close to nothing right now. Um, so it, you know, it's hard to see a pattern globally because it it really depends. You see some coronavirus-related reservations that are on the short term. And you see some reservation, uh, you know, for the for the high season or, or later in the year, but overall, you know, it's it's very low. So we did this chart. That was a that was a while ago. We we, we refresh it, but but basically, this shows, uh, you know, how the demand was on the books uh, last month for the for the year ahead. So you see, there is still some demand. You know, uh, a lot of the so for a lot of markets, summer is right here uh, in the high season, and you can see sort of uh, that there is some demand. We've seen markets, um, leisure markets, where normally demand is booked a long time in advance. So I'll give you an example. Mallorca is generally you know, booked quite in advance. Um, and here you can see that the reservations are, are holding up, and it's basically due to the uncertainty of, of how long this is going to last. You know? So in, in Europe, you know, we estimate that the lockdown, or, or from what we can read, you know, is going to be until mid-May, end of, I mean, mid-May if you want, you know, early June. And this would leave the possibility to some travel. Uh, so some reservations are still maintained, uh, but it's, it's, there's not much more you know, getting booked at the moment. 
people are not booking for their holidays, but the one that already booked, the travelers that already booked, they remain optimistic and they want to go on holiday as soon as the lockdown is lifted. They, they have kept, I mean, most of the reservations have been kept. We haven't seen, uh, you know, a huge, a huge impact on the reservation there. Um, and again, these things can change because we're, we're only, you know, a month into the sort of the confinement in most places. And, um, you know, the economic impact hasn't really hit yet completely on the, on the holiday plans. Because as you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of travelers will have shrinking revenue. Either they have had been fired or they've, uh, they've had to add pay cuts. So, you know, most of the travelers uh, will be affected and, and this will definitely impact their budget. But right now we haven't seen a huge impact on the, on the, on the high season. And again, what we're doing here is we're trying to monitor this, uh, these metrics to see you know, whenever there is this inflection point and people start booking again, uh, this is why we're putting together this, this report, right? So I know all of this sounds like gloomy and, and there's a lot of bad news, but basically we're doing this because we know uh, the world is on pause and our world as well is, but we want to monitor to see when there is this inflection point and, and uh, the demand starts to grow after, you know, the confinement and people want to escape. So this is why we put all of these uh, these charts together to to find the moment when when things uh, are are getting back, you know. Yeah, and I think everyone uh, who knows the existence of this dashboard must have been looking with big eyes to that inflection point, and it's crucial for property managers to get a good look at the data so they are not missing when the bookings are coming back. As you said, travelers will have less budget. There will still be restrictions on travel, so it's really crucial for them to have access to this type of tools and be able to really realize when demand is picking up so they can do, capture as much as they as, as much as they can into their into their own markets. And speaking of demands and uh, and cancellation, so I mean everyone in our industry is no stranger to the fact that the OTAs have also safeguarded their own business and have acted in a way that is for some people not uh, not satisfying. So uh, you show that uh, b before into the into the dashboard. Are you seeing listings disappearing from those big OTAs, going more to other type of channels, or is it something that in the end will go back to normal because when demand comes back again, people want to get as much as that demand as they can. Yeah, we, we try to monitor a little bit uh, cross-listing and see if, if there were an increase if, you know, in, in uh, people trying to find alternative source of reservations. We haven't seen a huge impact so far, all right? So it's, or, or, let, to say it better, if you want, there's, it's been compensated. So there hasn't been a, a huge shift of OTAs. I think, you know, people have their, uh, their assets there, which are their reviews and their, their online reputation. And, and this has a big value. So obviously people have maintained that. And, and, and I think we haven't seen any, any huge shift in, in the usage of, uh, of new platforms most of the time because most operators are, are really hit hard. And, and right now the time is more focused about you know, saving costs than, um, than really going out and, and, and try to expand to new platforms. That's, that's our understanding. So we haven't seen a, a huge impact from that point of view. Okay, perfect. So yes, of course, people are ventilating about their say, disappointment, but in the end, it's not followed by listings actually disappearing or supply disappearing from those from those platforms. And it's it's an interesting uh, fact to to underline. And yeah, we, sorry. maybe maybe one more one, one more point is what we've seen is it's true that the you know the um, it, there's been a, a lot of a lot of um, vocalization if you want to say it like that yeah. about about you know the um, the impression from travelers and from and, and from host on the different OTAs. so if you look at the different online review tools uh like um trust pilots and things like this you can actually see that some of the OTAs have really decreased their their online reputation so people have been very vocal and have expressed it but like you said we haven't seen um, a huge impact uh, at least yet on the different supply from the OTAs. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I guess everyone knows that uh, the OTAs are still in the best place to generate demand for accommodation and uh, no one wants to miss out on that because, as you said, everyone is trying to save their business and every booking counts at that moment. So it's, uh, it's really important for, for them to keep their listings there. And in, so we've, we, are, we are seeing some, 
some trends that might be a bit unexpected and you must have access to a ton of data on, on your side. To this day, what is the most unexpected thing that the data told you about the vacation rental market? What has surprised you when you, when you had looked at that and you said, wow, I wasn't expecting that to happen? It's a, it's a tough question. It's actually, you know, I'd say it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty hard to say because now it's, everything is pretty much behaving as we could expect in a, in a pandemic situation. Uh, I've been a little bit surprised maybe by the, the Chinese market. Uh, in, from our data, at least, we haven't seen a huge pickup yet. I know uh, there's been a lot of articles about the hotel, uh, the hotel data uh, showing that the hotel demand is getting back. On, on short-term rental, we haven't seen much yet. And, and, and that is um, probably because the OTAs that we're looking at, you know, uh, may have not open as fast as the hotels on the, for, on the Chinese market. But I would say maybe one surprise for us is that we haven't really seen that follow the same path as the, the hotel data. But other than that, you know, most of the data we've seen here is, is quite in line with, uh, with what, we, what we could expect um, in, in, a, in, the con in the current context. Okay, perfect. So yeah, it's, and it's surprising because as you say, China, we could expect that vacation rental would have picked up maybe faster than, uh, than hotels. So that's, uh, that's a very interesting fact. And maybe people in Europe can consider that when they will reopen to maybe look at what hotels are doing so they, they can get inspired in, uh, in some way and don't miss out because there will be a ton of supply available for travelers to choose from. And so do you see, I mean, in, in terms of, of the trends that you're, that you're looking at, so maybe something that is not surprising, but are you seeing new interesting trends such as more relaxed cancellation policies across the board, maybe higher cleaning fees because property managers want to really reassure their guests about the, the quality of their cleanings, the, the depth of their cleanings. Are you seeing this type of trends already happening? Or as you said earlier, everyone now is just focusing on saving their business. Uh, yeah, I think it's a little early still uh, to look at this. So we, are, we, are, we've, we did some search on cleaning fees and as well on the, on the marketing side of things and how people are promoting their listings. Mm -hmm. uh, we were surprised to see that there is not that much content yet on the listings about um, you know uh, COVID-19 or, or really health related uh, material so you know we could expect people to market a bit more actively how they clean the properties and things like this we haven't seen a huge increase in that yet and um, and cleaning is same thing for for cancellation um, we have to wait uh, I think a couple more months to see the impact um, I think we've got here the picture of how the cancellation were before uh, so this is the mix, if you want, of, of the cancellation type before the crisis. Mm -hmm. And we still have to wait a couple of weeks to receive the latest numbers because it takes a while to update. And hopefully we, we should see some, some difference here. But, you know, what we could expect, obviously, is that in order to get this new reservation, um, people have to increase their flexibility. And, you know, property managers and, and individual hosts most likely um, will, will have to adapt, at least if you want to get these years some level of reservation. But right now, um, like I said, it's a little bit early to see it still. We'll, we'll make sure we update everything in there uh, as soon as we got new numbers. Okay, perfect. So if you want to know what your, how your competitors are behaving with uh, the, their cancellation policy, well, maybe uh, put that into your favorites and monitor that dashboard from Transparent so you can get those insights and apply that to, to your own business. And so at the... Um, so at the, at the moment, because th that coronavirus, even though it's a global pandemic, not all countries are equal in front of, of, of that. So you see, for example, Greece has made really well in containing the epidemic, and you have other countries who have really had to put in place very strong measures. So what are the countries and regions at the moment who are enjoying the highest occupancy rate, even if it's still below what they were used to? Um, all right, so let me let me pull that out. I think in general, in general, ov overall the occupancy rate is might be a bit misleading because you need to compare where it was last year, and a lot of the occupancy today uh, is actually let me just put that up. Um, a lot of the occupancy today is very much related to. Let me see. Here. It's very much related to you know what was on the book before already uh, the crisis, right? So. Um, I'd say I'd say it's hard to say. We've seen uh, Canada, Canada, for instance, sorry, that has um, a little bit of demand left, 
um, maybe to the nature of their of their uh, you know of their vacation rental market. Um, but overall, it's like we've seen before; it's it's pretty much done everywhere. So I I, I couldn't say there's there's much countries that have been that have been saved, and, and this is this is again cancellation. I haven't put in there the, the occupancy by market. I have it somewhere. Uh, sorry about that, but but basically, overall, it's it's hit uh, it's hit pretty hard. I know Greece had some uh, some demand left, but overall, it's a lot of this is from last year, and 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 globally, I'd say it's the same situation. Okay, perfect. So to, to, and um, so we we might assume that that uncertainty on being able to go on holiday or not might make uh, instant booking. A bit different than uh, than what it was when there wasn't a, a pandemic. From your side, are you seeing more listings going on request, where hosts can basically choose if that booking will go and monitor the lockdown conditions into their area, or is it or is something that hasn't changed overall? Uh, it's it's completely flat. It's uh, yeah. So yeah, it's uh, out of memory. I think it's it's around sixty percent on 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 Airbnb, uh, and that that is out of memory. But you know, overall, it hasn't hasn't really changed. So you'll see um, the same amount than a month ago, pretty much. And and we could wait to see if the numbers change, but that hasn't been a, a, a significant impact. Okay. And uh, so from the so we are hearing a lot of uh, a lot of people being quite negative about the survival of their of their business and so as you said maybe the one that had leases on their properties are in a very very tough places now and maybe some property managers will have to, to close shop because they cannot maintain their operations basically are you seeing from the data you're collecting already companies that have disappeared or ceased to operate is it something that you can quantify with uh, with the data that you gather um, well, it's a tough question. We, we, at the moment, we really haven't seen that from the data side of things. Uh, obviously, we work with a lot of property managers and some of our clients, unfortunately, um, you know, some of them and some of our clients and prospects have already uh, had to shut down their, their businesses. And, and, you know, we're in, in the middle of a really, really hard uh, cash crunch. And unfortunately, those companies that don't have a lot of cash and are not able to to reduce their expenses in an agile way, well, unfortunately, they 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 won't be able to to stay around. So it's uh, as as tough it is to to realize it. Well, you know, we we've seen some some of our clients um, that have been forced to shut shut down, and and the others that haven't. Most of them have just been on hibernation mode, and uh, and we see that across uh, our industry, but also some other industry. Most most companies in in trouble are are just trying to cut costs as much as they can and, and just hibernate until demand comes back. So from the data side, no, no particular sign, but on our personal experience, yeah, we've seen, we've seen that happen. Okay. Yeah. And we can, we can obviously assume that the businesses with the most flexible cost structure or maybe with the biggest cash reserve will be able to weather that storm in maybe a better way than people that have least commitment, for example, or this type of um, this type of cost attached to to their operations. Okay, so that's uh, even if data cannot show cannot show that, I assume that the same as uh, same as us, you've been in touch with property managers that are really uncertain about the, the futures of their uh, of their business. But uh, happy to see that it's not as gloom as we could uh, as we could expect. And uh, so I'm I'm heading to uh, to my last question. So uh, what can you what can you tell to because we've painted quite a grim picture uh, during that uh, during that call today. But that's a realistic one, and it's important to know the extent of that uh, of that crisis. But what can you say to people who are listening? listening to us to help them keep their morals up. Are you seeing any glimpse of hope from the data that you that you have access to? Yeah, well, I mean, the right now the picture is, is pretty, you know, it's pretty dark and it's it's all related to the uncertainty we have on the on the health situation. We don't know how long this thing is gonna last. And and I think everyone is sort of on standby to see, you know, when it's it's slightly reopened. Um, what I what I can share is, you know, our 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 sort of our view of, of and, and, and sort of our vision of where this thing's gonna is gonna uh, go. So one of our you know one of our conviction is that uh, right now domestic travel will be the first one to pick up, um, and that's you know sort of logic as there will probably be no 
uh, long haul traveling uh, for a while, uh, at least until the situation really resolves. Mm -hmm. And what we, we can imagine is that most travel will be sort of um, local travel or really domestic travel. So a lot of markets are really well prepared for their, for their sort of local demand. So just to give as an example here in France, 66% of the demand is already local. So this, this is gonna help sort of uh, um, regenerate some demand and even markets, you know, maybe we look at Spain, 31%, Portugal is, is quite low, 7% and, and Italy, but we could still imagine with 18, we can still imagine that um, this country, these countries are gonna be able to generate some, some local demand and this is gonna help the industry restart at least. Um, and then what we think is, and that's a little bit more about, about you know, our opinion here, is that short-term rental are really well prepared for, for what's, what's to come next. And you know, that's one of the reasons why we put so much content here is because we really, really want to see, like I, like I mentioned earlier, this inflection point when things, uh, when the demand comes back. And we think that short-term rental are more naturally prepared for that. Um, the reason for that is, you know, compared to hotels, uh, hotel takes longer to restart. You know, they, they have um, they have bigger operations, and they have more staff, and it's a little bit more complex to to reopen. So, more likely, short-term rental will be able to reopen in a more agile way, and that's going to help us. And then another thing is they're you know much more naturally prepared for uh, sort of social distancing in the sense that you've got amenities that are really well prepared for for that you know own kitchen normally the spaces are are bigger and separated from from other other guests and this will definitely help and i would say also the granularity of our industry you know we've got properties everywhere you know if you look at a map and, and you map the short-term rental properties we really have good capillarity so we cover areas that hotels really can't cover. And I think that's gonna help, uh, you know, when once once travel reopen, people find this getaway to sort of get out of home and and, um, and escape from their confinement. And, uh, and, and, you know, maybe not far from home, maybe more budget than what they would have done the year before, but definitely we, we expect there will be some demand. So this is our conviction. Uh, this is our hope for the year, and what we're going to continue monitoring is uh, this inflection point to see uh, if uh, and when it, it, it happens. Okay. Well, Pierre, thanks a lot for for sharing that with us and more broadly with the whole with the whole industry. I think we can uh, we can hopefully share your optimism and assume that vacation rentals will be able to be more agile, as you say, and pick up faster. That's definitely what we are all hoping for. And uh, yes, thanks a lot for your time. I hope that just, just one one last comment. Yeah. I wanted to I, I wanted to share this. Uh this this little chart here so let me see if i can find it so just to 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 bounce back on that uh here um in this in this medium post by, by my friend maurice Preto, who is a, a travel industry expert he, he worked for a long time in our industry he made a survey with uh with industry experts from across the the entire travel space and he just released this survey so you know what people expect that um, you know sort of the, the the industry to grow stronger in the industry at least um, from an industry expert point of view is actually what they call alternative accommodation which is you know our industry so i think for me that's a pretty good signal that you know everyone in the travel industry expect us uh short-term rental to lead the recovery and and sort of be the ones that grow the strongest after the crisis so i think that's a, a good sign of hope that everyone agrees on that um, on the travel on the travel industry yeah, I uh, I couldn't agree more. And thanks for sharing that uh, that glimpse of hope for for tra from travel experts to other travel professionals. And uh, yes, of course, we we all hope that uh, that prediction will uh, be confirmed by facts when demand come back and when we can all enjoy uh, traveling somewhere. In any case, Pierre. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to thank you for your time, for your presence today, and for everything that you've been doing during the past weeks for everyone. It has been really really helpful, I guess. And uh, uh, hopefully soon we can do some conferences that won't be through Zoom, but uh, in physical events when that uh, when that will pick up. That's what we, we all hope for. And uh, yes, thanks a lot. And uh, I hope you will keep uh, being safe and your family and team as well. Thanks, Nicola. Thanks for having me and, uh, and stay safe and everyone stay safe as well. Okay. I will try. Thanks. Bye-bye.